Hello, Professor Stefero here, and today's screencast is going to focus on the unity and diversity of life with regard to DNA and evolution. Let's start with DNA. The model here represents DNA, and the unity of life is based on DNA structure. It's found in every cell, both prokaryotic and eukaryotic, and the genetic information is going to be used to control and regulate processes in the organism, especially in the cell. DNA consists of genes, which are a unit of information that will lead to the production of a protein. These genes leading to protein will determine structure and function in the organism, in the organism's organs, tissues, and also the cells. The diversity of life results from different DNA gene sequences. From species to species, in this figure, each color represents DNA's four nucleotides, and the codes are barcodes for four different species, the honeybee, the bumblebee, the American robin, and the hermit thrush. This is called barcoding live, and it is a project using the information from genome projects to identify and differentiate between species. So simply using a color bar to identify the gene sequences. So you can see how they do differ between and across species. The species genes are coded in sequences of four nucleotides that make up DNA's double helix. DNA's nucleotides are symbolized by the letters A, T, C, and G. The letters represent the nitrogen bases that make up that particular nucleotide. A is for adenine, T is for thymine, C is for cytosine, and G is for guanine. Two strands of DNA wrap around each other to form the double helix. The two strands are associated because particular bases always bond to one another. So if you look, you can see that A is always paired to T, adenine to thymine, and C is always paired to G cytosine to guanine, and these are referred to as base pairs, and their order along the DNA leads to a particular sequence of nucleotides. In summary, the unity of life is due to DNA being the universal genetic material and the four nucleotide bases, the building blocks, that are the same for all organisms. The diversity of life comes from the variation in nucleotide sequences that make up the genes for different organisms. Let's move on to the unity and diversity of evolution. The history of life, as documented by fossils, is a saga of a changing earth over billions of years and inhabited by an evolving cast of life forms. Evolution, along with DNA, accounts for the dual nature of unity and diversity. Evolution is change over time. It is a process that has transformed life over billions of years on Earth. And the evidence used to describe this process of evolution is one, the fossil record, which is composed of the physical remains of organisms. Two, geographic distribution of species, which indicates a common ancestry. Here we see armadillos, anteaters, and pangolins, and they ultimately have a common ancestral species, even though they live in very broad geographic locations homologous body structure which implies similar genes and so here's tying evolution to DNA 
the bat wing, the bird wing, and the insect wing actually have some common or similar structure, and that comes out of the uh, DNA sequences. And then similarities in earthly development, which also implies a similar gene. That is to say that we all end up looking kind of the same in the very early beginnings of development, whether we're a human, a chick, or a pig. In 1859, Charles Darwin published The Origin of the Species by means of natural selection. And the book accomplished two things. It presented evidence to support the idea of evolution and proposed a mechanism for evolution called natural selection. And the figure here is my copy of the origin of the species. But the scribblings that you see with the I think at the top comes right out of Darwin's personal journals where he thinks there is a common ancestor. And then from that organism led to all the diversity of life. And the mechanism by which that happened, he thought, and we still believe today, is natural selection. So natural selection is an editing mechanism. It results from the exposure of heritable variations to environmental factors that favor some individuals over others. So let's take this population of bugs. We'll change their color a bit. But they do have varied traits in terms of color. Some are gray, some are black, and some are white. The bird represents the selecting agent and will select some organisms over others. And because of that, that will lead to certain genes remaining in the population while others do not. And those that remain will be reproductively successful and will pass on those genes to their offspring. So those individuals with heritable traits best suited to the environment are more likely to survive and reproduce than less well-suited individuals. In this case, the less well-suited individual is the white bug. As a result of this unequal reproductive success, white bugs don't get to reproduce because they get eaten, over many generations an increasing proportion of individuals will have the advantageous traits. In this case that's going to be the darker bugs. They get to live so they pass on their genes. The result will be evolutionary adaptation. The accumulation of favorable traits in a population, right, a group of organisms, not in an individual itself. So Darwin's theory is based upon two big observations. Observation one, heritable variations or individual variations. This is the idea that individuals in a population will vary in their traits, many of which are inherited from parent to offspring. In the case of our bugs, it was the color of the bug. Observation two is overproduction of offspring. All species can produce far more offspring than the environment can support. Competition for resources then is an inevitable and many of these offsprings will fail to survive and reproduce. Thus Darwin inferred that unequal reproductive success leads to organisms that are best suited for their local environment and will be more likely to survive and reproduce than less well suited individuals. Additionally, as a result of this unequal reproductive success over many generations, a higher and higher proportion of individuals in the population will have the advantageous trait or the adaption. Okay, I hope that helps. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.